Defense Secretary James Mattis visited Afghanistan days after an attack on Afghan soldiers inside a mosque. Secretary Mattis met with the Afghan president and discussed efforts to combat the Taliban and U.S. strategy. Following their meeting, Secretary Mattis met with reporters. This is about 15 minutes. Is, but for those of you who traveled with me, if you've not seen him before, this is the NATO commander here of the international operation that's been going on for years. Uh, and as if we needed a reminder, as I stand here before you, uh, of the type enemy that we're up against, uh, the killing of Afghan citizen soldiers, uh, protectors of the people, uh, just as they were coming out of a mosque, you know, coming out of a house of worship, um, it certainly characterizes this fight for exactly what it is. Uh, these people have no religious foundation. They, have, they are not devout anything. And, uh, and it shows that we, why we stand with the people of this country against such heinous acts perpetrated by, uh, and I, the word gets used often, I think too often, but this is this barbaric enemy and what they do uh, kind of makes it clear to me why it is we stand together. I met today with President Ghani. I'd seen him in Europe uh, about two months ago, ladies and gentlemen. And here we had another focused discussion uh, here in Kabul as we worked to align our efforts. I thanked him for his warm welcome, and it certainly was that with him and his, uh, his leadership, for his personal leadership uh, uh, in the midst of very, very difficult times, and for the inclusive approach of this unity government with Chief Executive Abdullah, who was also in both our private meeting, the President and I, and also in the larger meeting between our uh, delegations. Uh, we discussed his initiative to make the government of national unity more responsive to all of the Nas Afghan people, and we all recognized the challenges to this government and to that effort uh, presented by enemies of the Afghan people who refused to renounce violence. As you know, President Trump has directed a review of our policy in Afghanistan as the new administration takes hold in Washington. This dictates an ongoing dialogue with Afghanistan's leadership, and that's why I came here. Talked again with President Ghani, with his ministers, and heard directly and at length from the NATO commander, General Mickelson, and, uh, and in order to provide my best assessment and advice as we go forward, uh, advice to the President, to NATO Secretary General, and all the troop contributing nations with whom I coordinate and collaborate. Our NATO General, our NATO Commander General Nicholson is one of our most experienced officers in the field, also one of our most serious strategic thinkers. Uh, the teamwork that we enjoy here between the Afghan government, our diplomats, and our international military contingents has reached very, very high levels of partnership in a word I found it impressive. Uh, within the new American administration, of course, our review in Washington is a dialogue with Secretary Tillerson and the uh, President and his staff in the White House. And I'd say that we're under no illusions about the challenges associated with this mission. 2017 is going to be another tough year for the valiant Afghan security forces and the international troops who have stood and will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with Afghanistan against terrorism and against those who seek to undermine the legitimate United Nations recognized government of this nation. If the Taliban wish to join the political process and work honestly for a positive future for the Afghan people, who have suffered long and hard. They need only to renounce violence and reject terrorism. It's a pretty low standard to join the, uh, join the political process. But uh, those are my impressions of what I was doing here uh, during these, these hours that I've been here on the ground. And uh, I can take any questions that you might have. Got a couple minutes for questions. Helene, go ahead, please.
contact underway between ISIS and Haqqani here in Afghanistan. And then separately for General Nicholson, you explained that you dropped the Moab on action to clear a tunnel of uh, in the cave complex of ISIS fighters. Uh, did you also consider this uh, larger strategic message that you might be sending to American adversaries like North Korea and Syria when you made that decision? Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Well, first, let me take the uh, second question first. Uh, the Secretary has talked about the, uh, the strike we conducted in Achen last week. I really have nothing to add with respect to that. I will say we were sending a very clear message to ISIS, uh, not only to ISIS here in Afghanistan, but also ISIS Maine, that they, if they come here to Afghanistan, they will be destroyed. In keeping with the Secretary's intent, they will be annihilated. And so this uh, continuing pressure we're putting on ISIS is achieving that effect, and we're going to keep it up. To shift to the first part of your question, uh, the Haqqanis and the Taliban uh, both pose a threat this year. We have not seen cooperation between ISIS-K and the Haqqanis. Uh, however, we're always watching for convergence between the various terrorist groups that we see here. Uh, ISIS-K claimed responsibility for the attack on the hospital that occurred. The Taliban have claimed responsibility for the attack that occurred up in Masri Sharif. Uh, again, we don't see the uh, connections between those two groups, but in terms of the way, what they did during these attacks, there's very much a connection. As the Secretary talked about in his comments, uh, the level of barbarity and cruelty, shooting patients in their beds, uh, killing uh, young soldiers at the mosque in prayer, uh, they're reaching new lows in terms of their behavior. And this is why the majority of the Afghan people, something like 87 percent, reject the Taliban and do not want to see a return of this regime. And as the Secretary said, uh, we are open to, I know our Afghan partners are open to uh, having the Taliban rejoin uh, peaceful life here in Afghanistan. Thank you. And the first part of my question uh, on whether or not you uh, assessment that the network was responsible for the base attack on Friday? We're, we're, still, we're still developing that, uh, and, and we'll let you know as we develop more details. The Taliban claim credit for the attack, yeah, but as you, as you know, uh, Helene, the Taliban and the Haqqani are linked. So Siraj Haqqani is the deputy of the Taliban. So uh, we tend to, to look at them uh, as, as one uh, quite often. So in, in the level of sophistication and the way this attack conducted, it's, it's quite possible that the Haqqanis were involved. Hi, uh, Kevin Baird from Defense Lawyer. Just to follow, I think you said uh, you're achieving the intended effects on, on ISIS growing here. When you say that for the record, does that mean that foreign fighters are not coming to, to Afghanistan? Are your number, other numbers dwindling or growing? What's ISIS' ability to sustain it? In short, is, is it the threat that many folks back home are, are starting to think that it has become? Well, ISIS is certainly a threat globally. ISIS Khorasan province is one of the principal affiliates of ISIS. And so they're attempting to establish their own form of a caliphate here by seizing and holding terrain. As, as you're aware, we have uh, begun, uh, we've been attacking that caliphate since last, uh, since early last year, reduced it by about two thirds in size, reduced their fighters by at least half. We've done this through a series of operations. Uh, the latest one started in early March continuous pressure on them, and we'll, we're going to keep going until they're defeated in 2017. Now, they have an aspiration, I think, to move fighters here from Syria. We haven't seen it happen. And in fact, by reducing their sanctuary here, by annihilating them here, there, it should be very clear to ISIS, mean there is no space for them to come to in Afghanistan. Well, the uh, the Russians uh, seem to be choosing to be strategic competitors in a number of areas. Uh, the level of granularity and the level of success they're achieving, I think uh, the jury is out on that. 
Uh, I'll let the general talk about any of the specific weapons and all, but the, the broader uh, strategic framework uh, that you're driving toward, uh, I would say that we will engage with Russia diplomatically. Uh, we'll do so where we can, uh, but we are going to have to confront Russia where what they're doing is contrary to international law, or denying the sovereignty of other countries. For example, uh, any weapons being funneled here from a foreign country would, it be, would be a violation of international law uh, unless they're coming through the government of Afghanistan for the, for the uh, Afghan forces. And so that would have to be dealt with as a violation of international law. Uh, but if you have any information on the weapons, I'm not aware of it. The, the only thing I would add to that is that we, we continue to get reports of this assistance and of course we had the uh, overt legitimacy lent to the Taliban by the Russians. Uh, that, that, that really occurred during late last year beginning through this uh, process they've been undertaking. Uh, and of course, uh, as the Secretary stated, uh, we support anyone who wants to help us advance the reconciliation process, but arming belligerents or legitimizing belligerents who perpetuate attacks like we saw two days ago. Uh, in Masri Sharif is not the best way forward to a peaceful reconciliation. Should it be clear you're not refuting that they're sending weapons to the Taliban? Oh, no, I'm not refuting that. Okay. Well, th uh, yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Sorry, the, ge the general, uh, Hans Nicholas, NBC News, the general sitting next to you, is standing next to you, has said that we're to stalemate in terms of the U.S. versus the Taliban. He's also requested thousands of more troops. Which one is it? Are you comfortable with the stalemate, or do we need more troops. Uh, frankly, I don't see any uh, tension between those two things, uh, those two factors. Uh, right now, we're engaged in defining the challenge, the way ahead, with a whole lot of nations, and it depends. There's no one nation that's going to carry all this, so there's a lot of collaboration and that is based on an assessment of the tactical and operational challenge and where we want to be and what time. So to, I, I'm not going to get into how you would characterize it in one word, but we are going to address that situation and move forward together uh, against the terrorists. And that is exactly why we're meeting now. And those, obviously, I owe some degree of confidentiality on where my thinking's at and what I'm going to recommend uh, once I compile my notes from this trip and speak to some of our NATO allies about the way ahead. Let me ask this a slightly different way. Is NATO winning this conflict? And if not, is it winnable? Uh, the, the bottom line is that this fight against terrorism is going to go on. You saw what happened in Paris. You see the French troops engaged down in Africa. You find the NATO for NATO led force is a lot more than just NATO here in Afghanistan. You see what's going on against ISIS in Syria. This fight is going to go on. Uh, we're in an era of frequent skirmishing. It's going to be far flung, and that's the the nature of this fight. Uh, and uh, concise, uh, short definitions in one local area or another do not give sufficient credit to. Uh, uh, really defining the complexity of the issue. Sure, that's all the time we've got. we got to get you to your next thing. Thank you guys very much. Though. All right, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks.